Assalamualaikum. Today we will discuss about the unit number four, constructing objective test items simple form. This chapter discuss the objective test items and its different uses, advantages, limitations, and rules for construction of different objective test items. This chapter is also discussed about the simple forms of objective test items, which is the true false, short answer, and matching exercises. The first one is the short answer item. This short answer item and the conclusion item both are supply type test items that can be answered by a word, phrase, number, or symbol. They are essentially the same, differing only in the method of presenting the problem. The short answer item uses a direct question, and where is the completion item consists of an incomplete statement in which you provide the answer. For example, short answer, what is the name of man who invented the chain board? And the completion item is, the name of the man who invented the chain board is Dash. Uses of short answer items. The short answer item test is suitable for measuring a wide variety of re relatively simple learning outcomes. The following outcomes and test items illustrate some of its common uses. The short answer items can be constructed when we want to take a knowledge of terminology when you want to ask questions about the specific facts, principles, method or procedures, or we can simply interpret the data, then we can easily make the construct the short answer items. Advantages and limitations of short answer items. The first advantage is short answer item is easy to construct. Because of the relatively simple learning outcomes, it usually measures. The second advantage is the student must supply the answer because it reduces the possibility that the student will obtain the correct answer by guessing. There are two limitations of short answer items. The first one is unsuitable for measuring complex learning outcomes, and the second one is the difficulty of scoring. There are some suggestions for constructing the short answer item. The first one is word the item so that the required answer is both brief and specific. There is a poor and better example are given in the slide. You can read it. The second is do not take statements directly from the textbook to use as a basis for short answer item. As you see the example. As the better example, the teacher must elaborate it properly and make a proper statement by himself and then give in the paper. Third one is a direct question is generally more desirable than an incomplete statement in short answer questions. You can see the poor, better, and best examples. The fourth suggestion is, if the answer is to be expressed in numerical unit, indicate the type of answer wanted. The fifth suggestion is, when completion items are used, do not include too many blanks. It is not desirable in short answer items. The next uh, topic is true false or alternative response items. It is the second objective test item type. The alternative response test item consists of a declarative statement that the student is asked to mark as true or false, right and wrong, correct or incorrect, 
yes or no, fact or opinion, disagree or agree. In each case, there are only two possible answers. Because the true false option is most commonly used, so this item type is most frequently referred to as the true false test item. Uses of true false items The most commonly use of the true false items is in measuring the ability to identify the correctness of statement of facts, definition of terms, statement of principles and the like. For measuring such relatively simple learning outcomes, a single declarative statement is used with any one of several methods of responding. For example, read each of the following statements. If the statement is true, circle the T. If the statement is false, circle the F. See another example instruction. Read each of the following questions. If the answer is yes, circle the Y and if the answer is no, circle the N. The second use is true false item is in measuring the student's ability to, dis din, uh, to distinguish between facts and from opinion. The following example illustrates this use and the option is also F and O. The next is another aspect of understanding that can be measured by the true false item is the ability to recognize cause and effect relationship. This type of item usually contains two true propositions in one statement and the student is to judge whether the relationship between them is true or false. For example, in each of the following statements, for both parts of the statement are true, you are to decide whether the second part explains why the first part is true. If it does, circle yes, and if it does not, circle no. For example, the right answer is some plants do not need sunlight because they get their food from other plants. They both have the two parts, but the uh, item number one, leaves are essential because this shade that we trunk that is not true the other part is not true so the answer is no the true false items also can be used to measure some simple aspect of logic as illustrated by the following items that were developed for use in a science test for example read each of the following statement if the statement is true circle the t and if it is false circle the f and when you convert the statement and if it is true then circle the uh, c t and if it convert is false circle the c f be sure to give two answers for each statement criticism on true false items a common criticism on true false item is that it uh, a student may be able to recognize the false statement as incorrect but still not know what is correct. For example, when student answer the following item as false, it does not indicate whether they know what negatively charged whether they know what negatively charged particles of electricity are called. All the answers tell us that they know they are not called neutrons. To overcome such difficulties some teachers prefer to have the student change all false statements to true. When this is required, the part of the statement it is permissible to change should be indicated. For example, read each of the following statements. If a statement is true, circle the T. And if a statement is false, circle the F and change the underlying word to make the statement true. Place the new word in the blank space after the F. So in this way, we overcome this criticism. Advantages and limitations of true false items. A major advantage of true false item is that they are efficient. Efficient in a way that students can typically respond to roughly three to uh, three true false items in the time it takes to respond to two multiple choice items. One advantage uh, cited frequently for true false item is that it is easy in construction and the second advantage is 
white sampling of coarse content can be obtained through true false one of the most serious limitation of the true false item is in the type of learning outcome that can be measured that true false items are not specially useful beyond the knowledge area and other limitation is that also have the chances of guessing so these are the limitations of true false items now see the suggestions for constructing true false items through which we overcome some limitations of true false items the first one is a wide broad general statement if they are to be judged true or false the second one is a wide tribal statement the third one is avoid the use of negative statement especially double negatives you can see the example none of the steps in the experiment was unnecessary and its better uh, form is all of the steps in the experiment were necessary avoid long complex sentences you can see in the example so the teacher need to rephrase the statement from the course content rather than giving as it is avoid including two ideas in one statement unless cause and effect relationship are being measured true statement and false statement should be approximately equal in length so it avoid the chances of guessing the number of true statements and the number of false statement should be approximately equal in paper so student can not easily guess how uh, about the false and true statement the third type of objective test item is matching exercises matching exercises consist of two parallel columns with each word number or symbol in one column being matched to a word sentence or phrase in the other column the items in the column for which a match is found are called premises and the item in the column for which the selection is made or are called responses the basis for matching premises to responses is sometimes self evident but more often must be explained in the direction in any event the student task is to identify the pairs of items that are to be associated on the basis indicated for example the student may be asked to identify important historical event as in the following illustration you can see the example the next is its uses of matching exercises the typically matching exercises is limited to measuring factual information based on simple association whenever learning outcomes emphasizes the ability to identify the relationship between two things and a sufficient number of homogeneous premises and responses can be obtained then a matching exercise seems to be most appropriate example of relationship considered important by teachers in a variety of fields including the following persons achievement dates historical events terms definitions rules example and so on advantages and limitation of matching exercises the first advantage of a uh, matching exercise is its compact form which make it possible to measure a large amount of related factual material in a relatively short time another advantage often cited for the matching exercises is ease of construction the limitations of matching exercises is it restricted to the measurement of factual information based on rote learning and that is highly susceptible to the presence of irrelevant clues another limitation somewhat related it is the difficulty of finding homogeneous material that is significant from the view point of our objectives and learning outcomes there is some suggestions for constructing matching exercises the first one is uses only homogeneous material in a single matching exercise you can see the example the next phase include an equal unequal number of responses and premises and instruct the student their response may be used once more than once or not at all means the instruct instructions must be clear for the students 
The third one is keep the list of items to be matched, please, and place the shorter responses on the right. Arrange the list of responses in logical order, place words in alphabetical order, and numbers in sequence. It can also use to reduce the guessing chance of for a student. Indicate in the directions the basis for matching the responses and premises. Means direction must be clear. And the last one is place all the items for one matching exercises on the same page. Thank you.